cover Killer Nation needs 10 awesome songs. Yeah. Now remember, you can follow the action over at the official Cover Killer Nation blog. There is a link in the description box for that. And also, we have fan funding going throughout this entire, entire, entire extravaganza. Uh, there is a hot little card thingy that's going to be in the top right-hand corner of the screen, somewhere over here. And anything that you do, I thank you very much for it, because this does get tiring. Uh, that's for darn sure. But 10 awesome songs that you may not know or remember. Remember that second portion because it's going to become very important in this episode. So let's get started. Number 10, we have Blackwater Park with Roundabout. Now you might be thinking, Blackwater Park, that's the name of an, of an Opeth album. N no, it's also the name of a band. Roundabout, that's the name of a Yes song. It's also the name of a Blackwater Park song. This is off of The Dirt Box from 1972. Uh, Mike actually named Blackwater Park the album uh, after this group. Now, Blackwater Park only had one album, and that was The Dirt Box from 72, and they had this sensibility that straddled between progressive rock and hard rock, and this is one that definitely leans a little bit more toward the hard rock department, and it definitely periods and dates itself a little bit based around that, because you can think and kind of hear where the arena rock, the arena hard rock at the time was uh, really starting to be on the rise because of groups such as this one. So it's almost like this band was around a little bit too soon or it kind of treaded the line a little bit too close to prog rock and wasn't part of the initial explosion. Still really love this track because it just has great presence, not to mention you can definitely tell uh, that why this was such a huge deal in the 1970s because the riffs were big even if the production was kind of, you know, light on the ears. Number nine, we have Outcast with Atlians. Now, remember how I said you may not remember it? You definitely know Outkast, but do you know Atlians? This is off of their very first album of the same name, and it's from the latter portion of the 1990s. And you can definitely tell where these guys were getting some of their rhymes from and where they were getting some of their weirdness from. It just that this was not necessarily, it wasn't their time yet. They were sort of on the forefront of success whenever this album came out and whenever this song was a single, but I remember loving it whenever I was young, and I still love it to this day. Who knew that these guys were going to rise and really be selling Diamond? I, I think one of their albums did Diamond, so yeah. Who knew? Who thought that that was going to happen? But it's exactly what did. It was their perfect time in the middle portion of the 2000s with albums such as Speaker Box, The Love Below, and things like that. But this is where it all got started. Really, really cool track. It was a little strange for its time. I think that uh, whenever you date it a little bit, that's probably the reason why it wasn't taking off as rapidly. But obviously, eventually it did. Number eight, we have Hood with the song Closure. This is off of the album Outside Closer from 2005. If you're a fan of Stephen Wilson or Sigaros or any sort of sonic pioneer that doesn't necessarily uh, need all that aggressive of a tone and is has a little bit of electronic property to it, then you guys are really going to like Hood, especially this song. These guys are sonic pioneers in the fact that they don't necessarily just stick with one style, and uh, this electronic style is prominent on uh, Outside Closer, but with some of their other work, it's something that's a little bit uh, toned down a little bit. Uh, I, I like this track because it also sort of mirrors a little bit of progressive rock in a way, and that's the reason why Stephen Wilson fans will really dig this track. There's a lot of emotional and tonal uh, atmosphere and a lot of emotional and tonal space that is allowed for everything, and it is kind of a heartbreaking track, so definitely check this one out. Number seven, we have Beatrix Smetana with The Moldau. Now, this is a classical composer, so you're going to probably find this on a classical disc, either that or if you are fortunate enough to see a disc of all of his work, this song will definitely be on either of those because it's his most famous work. It's all about a river. Nearly 13 minutes, multiple movements. It's my favorite classical piece of all time. I'm going to leave it at that because, really, this is something that encourages you to check things out for yourself and really kind of find something new, and I think that if you're not necessarily a classical nut, you're going to really love this, but if you are a classical nut, you probably already know of this, and it's time for you to revisit it. Number six, we have Vulture Industries with Blood Don't Flow Streamlined. This is off of the Dystopia Journals from 2007. Now, the first thing a lot of folks are going to say is, man, this sounds a lot like Garm. This sounds a lot like Oliver or Arcturus had a baby, and that's kind of what this band's all about. That's kind of really what they're whole entire property is, and it's kind of an awesome cinematic experience. If you are a big fan of Arcturus, if you're a big fan of Oliver, if you're basically a fan of anything from that style, you're going to really enjoy this group because they have a similar vein. They're touring with Arcturus uh, for some dates this year for, the Ar uh, for Arcturian by Arcturus, and 
uh, they are a fitting opener. They're one that definitely fits right within that philosophy. It's almost going to be like seeing two bands that are brother and sister. It's wild. These guys are really cool. These guys are also kind of mired in the background a little bit, whereas Arcturus has a little bit more traction. These guys need a little bit more in the way of fan base. Check them out. Number five, we have Love Song Bleach Bath by Rattlehead. These guys are a thrash punk crossover band. Uh, and this is an album from 2010 entitled Tales from the Gutter. I really like the fact that this is punk enough where it has sort of that old school charm uh, where it re really reminds you of the crossover stuff that was crossing over with Thrash in the 1980s, but it's 2010. You have aggressive, aggressive guitars. You have aggressive lyricism. It's just very, very fun stuff to listen to. Plus, this is a short track, but the guitar solo that you hear right near the end is right out of the playbook, and it's one where it's amazing uh, that Rattlehead didn't get more national or international coverage whenever Tales from the Gutter came out in 2010. So we definitely need to do a little bit of revitalization for this group here in 2015. Number four, we have Ebony Tears with Harvester of Pain. This is off of A Handful of Nothing, which is from 1999. And the best way that I could really describe these guys are death metal with a little bit of a thrash mentality, mainly because they do have the aggressiveness uh, that you would see in a thrash metal band, meanwhile sticking with... Uh, largely the death metal style vocals. Think a little bit of what uh, some uh, stuff from The Haunted is like and kind of ramp it up a little bit more and you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. These guys had a pretty good run whenever they were uh, around, but they really didn't get a, a ton of traction. This is one of those groups that really was a, a fixture whenever heavy metal was still kind of in hush tones in the underground and we had not yet had the explosion, especially here in America, of, uh, of metalcore, which really revitalized the heavy metal youth. Uh, however, these guys, for anybody who had the opportunity to check them out, or and did, really were very rewarded with some pretty satisfying material. So I definitely encourage you to go check these guys out. They have about five albums worth of material, if not more. Number three, we go all the way back to 1993 for two songs. Uh, number three is Come Around by Sugar. And this is off of the Beaster EP. These guys are more of an alternative group, more of a just... They're more of a rock group than anything else. And this is the uh, the first song off of that Beaster EP that has very, very few lyrics, but it's the hypnotic, hypnotic nature of this song that just kind of keeps it flowing. It's something where you can almost hear yourself putting some lyrics to it subtly in the background. And you almost wouldn't want to put them closer to the forefront of the music because it would almost decay the overall property of this just... Very hypnotic, very nice rhythm. It's one that really screams 1993, so it's one that's perfectly period placed. But at the same time, Sugar is a band that was a bit underrated and underappreciated, and after they were gone, there wasn't much talk about them for quite some time until recently. So this is a group to definitely check out if you're into that department and really want to know what alternative music was all about in the 1990s, in the early days of the 1990s. And you could also go to number two, uh, which is Baphomet by the group Quicksand. This is off of Slip from 1993 also, and this, it, this song is an instrumental, so it could be labeled as instrumental alternative, but they do sing on the remainder of Slip, and these guys are fantastic in the fact that they have that real philosophy of the age, and it's one that, that some people will argue helped sign Heavy Metal's death nail, but I think we've discussed that metal was still alive and well and doing pretty well in the 1990s. It's just that the scene had moved from the United States principally over into Europe, or the scene had moved from thrash metal and into the realm of death metal, which is not quite as accessible. But I really like Baphomet, and I really like Quicksand, because it really it, they, they were an alternative band that kind of eased its way onto some grunge territory at times without going full on into the genre, and they're just a really, really solid, tight group that wrote some pretty good music that just wasn't heard by very many people. They remind me a lot of Summer Camp in that variety, and the fact that they wrote solid material that just was not heard by enough people. It brings us to number one. I've talked about these guys before. I've done a review of the album, but I'm going to do the song 4.45 AM uh, by the band Isles. And these guys are up-and-comers, and they really shouldn't be. They should be up and hearers because they are absolutely fantastic. They have this very awesome philosophy about how they handle their work. It's progressive rock that can border on metal. It's uh, songs that definitely tell some tales and some stories. Also has a little bit of a prominent philosophy in there. In fact, I just had 
uh, Shallow and Daft on uh, the official GATG show uh, for their uh, Great American Demise series. Uh, but now I have to promote these guys again on here because Isles are just a fantastic group. If you're in the progressive rock, you need to check these guys out. And you have to do it post-haste. You have to do this immediately. Uh, the album is available both on YouTube but also at their official website, which is uh, islesproject.com, I believe. Um, just check these guys out. You will not regret it. And there you have it, 10 songs that you may not know, or in the case of some, you just may not have simply remembered until now. Uh, we are now up to 90 tracks on this. We're going to be getting to triple digits here at the next episode. As I said before, uh, for 24 hours of Cover Killer Nation, we are running the fan funding uh, universally 24-7, 365. Uh, but for this project and for this uh, event, uh, it's definitely the best time of all to, uh, to donate and for anybody who decides to do that, I thank you so very, very much. I want to be able to do stuff like this for you guys in the future. Uh, if you're brand new to the fold, hit the subscribe button. You don't need to fan fund if you're new. Hit the subscribe button and let's be friends. Hit the like button and tell me that you really dug this. And even hit the dislike button if you thought this list was other crap or you didn't know anything on it and you feel like a simpleton. Just means you need to look some stuff up and get your ass some culture. Boy, I'm done. See ya.